back here today of Doodle Gaming. And we got a little LAV gameplay here. We're gonna do a little bit of a review and gameplay. And I tell you what, rounds like this are just what make me love Battlefield. And really start to love this Battlefield 4 game. The game's been out a few weeks. Finally starting to get everything ironed out, getting the computer working good on the game, getting the frame rate up there where I want it, getting all the vehicle specifications loaded out the best as, best as you can, and really just starting to learn how to play the game, and really just enjoying it. I tell you what, this Battlefield 4 game is great. I really think they did a good job on this game. The balancing is pretty good. I think they used all of the learning experiences they got from Battlefield 3 on what to balance, what not to balance. There's not too much in this game that's too overpowered. Or in Battlefield 3, even at the end, there were a lot of things that were overpowered. For example, the T-shell, which I'm using right here in Battlefield 3, that was the most overpowered thing in the game. But I don't think many people complain about it because, honestly, not too many people had it unlocked. I tell you what, when I was in a tank and I'd see an LAV driver with a, with ar excuse me, reactive armor on, I would turn and run. I had nearly a 7 to 1 KD driving a tank and even a moderately competent LAV driver, as long as he had the T-shells, could pretty much destroy me. I didn't have much of a chance. In, when it came to taking out an LAV, I mean, it, when they had reactive armor and the uh, the T shells, it was rough. But Battlefield 4, they changed it up quite a bit. On the LAV right now, I'm using the reactive armor. I'm using active protection, which I will talk about in this video. A couple of my subscribers had asked about how to use active protection, how does it work, and what's it for. And we will talk about this video. It's actually pretty cool. I'm not sure if it will be my first choice or not. I'll have to use it a little more, but it is a pretty, pretty neat setup. How it works. Also using on this tank, I'm using the Zuni rockets, which I tell you what, these things are little terrorists. You get eight of them, and you get two more reloads in your queue. And these things are great for taking out infantry and taking out tanks. You can waste pretty much anything with the Zuni rockets. You could also get the Zuni rockets on the boat as well. I did a little review on that a little while back. I'll put a link in the description to my best boat loadout. I think we will call this the best LAV loadout because I really feel this is the best loadout for the LAV using the T-shells, using the Zuni rockets. And you definitely need that reactive armor. Without the reactive armor, I mean, vehicles kind of lack a bit. You can get that one shot disable in Battlefield 4, which is different than Battlefield 3. But it just really helps you out quite a bit when you can take that shot, you can move on, you can identify the enemy and eliminate him before you're actually disabled and just sitting there like a, well, just like a sitting duck, not moving. In Battlefield 4, as you know, the disable hasn't changed. In Battlefield 3, as long as you got down to 50 health in the tank, or is about 55 in an LAV, you would be disabled until you repaired it back to 100% health. Where in Battlefield 4, we now have a system where you can go all the way down to zero without ever stopping, as long as you don't get a direct 90 degree hit or a direct hit to your back. You can go all the way down to nothing without a complete disable, if you get lucky, that is. Let's talk a little bit about the map we're playing on today. We're playing on the Rogue Transmission map. This is a brand new map in Battlefield 4. It was never used in any other previous games. What it's based off of is the center satellite is from the Arecibo Observatory. That's actually in Puerto Rico. But the map itself is based in China in Battlefield 4 world. And that center satellite is the Levolution on this map. If you eliminate all the wires that hold it up, it does come down. And it just looks pretty cool when it happens. I think it's a pretty neat feature of the map. The satellite comes down and changes that uh, center flag up a bit. It's a pretty cool map in that there are a lot of different places you can fight. You can pretty much use any of the vehicles to the best of their advantage. You can 
has some open warfare in the section of the map here where you're kind of taking longer shots if you want to use a tank with some some of the sabo rounds or if you want to use a staff shell this is kind of the area you would use it in but if you want to go under the the satellite dish there you can you can use some of the like closer closer rounds for the LAV such as the canister shell or you can go full on infantry or you can just be like those campers up in the hills there that you know I'm sure they have 30 to 1 KD we all know one of those but yeah it's a pretty nice map it's great scenery <laughs> but you have this thing at full resolution it is pretty cool Battlefield 4 is a beautiful game I am using the T-Shell here, which is quite a bit different from Battlefield 3 and how it worked. But don't get, get me wrong, the uh, T-Shells are still super effective against enemy vehicles. And I actually think they're way more effective now against en enemy infantry. Before, you could kill enemy infantry with the T-Shells, but it was pretty hard. It was pretty much a skill thing. You had to really lead your target and just anticipate where they were running. But now they up the feet per second of which the T-Shell travels, and this thing's pretty good at direct hit kills on enemies. You can much hit them much easier due to the fact that the um, shell itself travels faster. And if any of you guys watched my Sabo shell review yesterday, I reviewed the Sabo shell for the tank, and I also said that T-shells are also Sabo shells that come out, they're like basically, the T-shells are darts. They come out in a shell, and the shell peels off of the, the actual dart itself, and they travel very quickly towards the enemy, and, and that is how they pierce armor, is through fear, pure velocity instead of an um, explosive warhead, like a high explosive tank shell would. I think they're definitely... I wouldn't call them better in Battlefield 4, but I definitely wouldn't call them nerfed down to where it's like you can't use them. I still think they're a definite must use on the LAV. <clears throat> now another thing I had some questions about was active protection. How, what does the active protection do? How do you use it? And active protection works just like you, just like smoke basically. I will do a full vi video on the active protection coming up, but basically use it just like smoke. Instead of instead of doing it after the shell is fired, I recommend you hit the active protection button just before you think the shell is coming your way. And you will actually, what happens is there's a little active protection pod that's installed on top of your LED or your tank or actually the attack boat has it as well. And I believe the anti-air vehicle does too. I wouldn't see why it would, but I just have to look into that one or unlock it for that matter. But as the shell is coming towards your tank, instead of actually hitting your tank, it explodes beforehand. And sometimes they seem to do actual damage, but other times they do no damage. It, it's still kind of funky. I'm not sure if they have it ironed out absolutely perfect I'll have to use a little bit more maybe I'm doing something wrong I'm not quite sure but sometimes I think maybe jet missiles I think some of the jets are just drowned and some of the rounds I've done have been using the uh, laser guided missile maybe they do more damage and therefore they still do about 30 damage to your vehicle whereas if you didn't have the active protection they actually do a lot of damage the um, Guided shell from the from the attack jet in Battlefield 4 does a lot more damage than Battlefield 3. But still with active protection, I found a couple times it's still done about 30 damage to my tank or my LAV. But I will be continuing to use it some more so I can figure out if it's something I'm doing wrong and basically just how to most effectively use active protection. With that being said, I think. It's great that in Battlefield 4, DICE put the LAV back in its place, which isn't exactly good for the LAV, but I think it's back where it belongs, under the tank, 
foot over top of the anti-air vehicle. Because in Battlefield 3, I just think the LAV was too powerful. And in real life, in all reality, tanks are the top dog. They take out LAVs. LAVs don't consistently take out tanks in a straight up one-on-one -on -one battle. I understand. I'm sure there are a few LAV drivers in the real world out there who would say, oh no, I can take out a tank with my LAV. It probably has. But in Battlefield, the tank is the biggest armor, has the most armor, and it should be able to take out an LAV. I think DICE did a great job balancing it. But don't get me wrong, if you're a skilled LAV driver, you can definitely take out tanks. As you can see me doing in this video, using those Zuni rockets to get the real armor damage on the tank, and following it up with the T-shells, finishing it off. I mean, it's a good combination. I think it's a well-balanced thing. Even if you do have to give up a little bit of the ability to take out infantry, I think it is that important to make sure that you can go against a vehicle and be on the same par as it. And when you're using LAV in Battlefield 4, as in Battlefield 3, and, and this goes along with pretty much any other vehicle, you gotta keep on the move. Especially when you're going up against a tank who has more armor than you, or if you're going up a couple, up against a couple vehicles at the same time, you gotta keep moving. You gotta keep that LAV on the move so you force your enemies to miss shots. You force guys to mess up, make bad tactical moves, so you can win the battle. As you can see here, I'm kind of backing up so that tank has to take a longer shot. He does hit me, but I'm already on the way out of the battle so I can repair myself and get going again. It's just something you have to do. You gotta keep your vehicle armor topped off and avoid going outside of the map at all possible. It's a dumb way to die. Eh, we've all done it, but it happens. Yeah, you just have to keep on the move. Make sure you're mobile at all times. I've said this before, but a soldier in motion stays in motion. In this little clip coming up here, you're going to learn that the Zuni rockets can do some mega damage to helicopters. They do 25 damage per rocket that you hit a helicopter. If you hit a little bird or an attack helicopter with two of those suckers, those things get, get critical damage and they end up going to the ground. And you can drive up them and finish them off with whatever you feel like finishing them off with, whatever your secondary loadout is. As I said earlier in the video, I think this is the best all-around LAV loadout for Battlefield 4. This may change with patches, with buffs, and some of the weapons. Some of the weapons may go down in power, you never know. But I think this is the best loadout all-around, just for a simple ability of taking out armor. It does take a bit more skill to take out infantry with this loadout, but if you're in a battle, really need to be able to be on par with the tank the best you can because the tank is still a bit more powerful but you need to be able to compete with the tanks as long as you're playing tactically as well as using the weapons at your disposal to take out enemy infantry but overall I think this is an awesome loadout for every map there are some maps I probably will change up I do like playing with the canister shell on the LAV. I think it's a really cool addition for Battlefield 4. I will be doing a video about it soon because I do enjoy playing with it on some of the maps like Pain and Resort that you have only LAV if you don't have another tank on the map. I think the canister shell is pretty good. But for rounds where you're playing against tanks, I think you should definitely choose this loadout. If you haven't chosen it, check it out. Tell me what you think about it. If you do have a better one, let me know. I'd like to try them out. Not everything I say is gospel, but I do try to test my loadouts the best I can because I want to be competitive. I want to be the best I can be in Battlefield 4 and really help you guys out along the way. I appreciate you guys all watching. Please hit that like button. Please, if you want to see some more like this, hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to come out with videos to really help out the Battlefield 4 community and help out my subscribers and make you guys better players. I appreciate all of you watching. This is Noodle, signing off. Remember, use your Noodle.